In this video, we will discuss the anatomy of the eyelids, a key component in protecting and maintaining the health of our eyes. In this regard, we will begin our presentation with a comprehensive introduction following this, we will delve into a detailed description of the eyelid surfaces and the lid margin, highlighting their unique characteristics. We will then examine the candas, the orbital septum, and the tarsus, explaining their functions and significance. Moving forward, we will explore the anatomy and roles of the eyelid muscles, followed by an in-depth look at their blood and nerve supply. To provide a holistic understanding, we will also discuss common disorders and their impact on these structures. Lastly, we will conclude with key takeaways, summarizing the most important aspects and their relevance in clinical practice. The eyelid is a sophisticated cutaneous muscular membranous structure, elegantly designed and seamlessly integrated with the facial skin. Its primary role is to cover and protect the anterior surface of the eye, but it accomplishes much more than just acting as a physical barrier. The eyelids serve three primary functions, the eyelids act as a protective barrier for the eye. They reflexively close in response to potential threats, such as foreign objects or sudden bright lights, thereby safeguarding the delicate structures of the eye from damage. The eyelids play an integral role in the lacrimal system, responsible for the production and drainage of tears. Tears are essential for keeping the surface of the eye moist and free of debris. Each blink helps to spread tears evenly across the eye and facilitates their drainage through the lacrimal puncta, tiny openings located at the inner corner of the eyelids. Additionally, the eyelids are crucial in expressing emotions and facial expressions. The subtle and sometimes subconscious movements of the eyelids can convey a wide range of emotions, from joy to sorrow, surprise to fatigue, thus playing a significant role in nonverbal communication. The human eyelid structure consists of an upper and a lower eyelid, each contributing to the overall function of the eye. They meet at the medial and lateral canthi, the corners of the eye. The eyelids are composed of several layers, each with its unique function. The outermost layer is the skin, which is remarkably thin and flexible, allowing for a wide range of movements required for eyelid function. Beneath the skin lies a layer of muscle, primarily the orbicularis oculi, responsible for blinking and closing the eye. Deeper still is the tarsal plate, a firm strip of connective tissue that gives the eyelid its shape and structure. The innermost layer is the conjunctiva, a mucous membrane that lubricates the eye. We will begin our presentation by focusing on the anterior surface of the eyelid, which exhibits several distinct features. The upper eyelid extends superiorly towards the eyebrow, whereas the lower eyelid, extending below the inferior orbital rim, merges seamlessly with the cheek. The skin of the eyelid is anatomically divided into two main parts, the orbital portion and the tarsal portion. The tarsal portion, positioned between the free border of the eyelid and the superior palpebral sulcus, is particularly noteworthy. The superior palpebral sulcus itself serves as a demarcating line, highlighting the distinction between these two portions of the eyelid. The orbital portion is immediately recognizable due to its delicate and thin skin, a characteristic that enhances its flexibility and sensitivity. This thinness is crucial for the functionality of the eyelid, allowing for a broad range of movements and expressions. In contrast, the lower eyelid is defined by three distinct sulci, the inferior palpebral sulcus, the malar sulcus, and the nasodugal sulcus. Each of these sulci contributes to the overall contour and aesthetic of the eyelid. The space that lies between the upper and lower eyelids is termed the palpable fissure. This gap is not only significant for its role in vision and eye protection but also contributes to the aesthetics of the eye, influencing how the eyes appear in terms of size and shape. On the other hand, the posterior surface of the eyelid is lined by the palpable conjunctiva, a smooth, pink mucous membrane that plays a crucial role in eye lubrication, protection, and immune defense. This membrane's concavity is anatomically designed to conform precisely to the convex shape of the anterior surface of the eyeball, facilitating a perfect anatomical fit. This congruence is essential for the smooth movement of the eyelids over the eye, ensuring minimal friction and optimal protection. The eyelid margin represents a critical anatomical feature where the upper and lower eyelids converge. Anatomically, it is a narrow strip, typically measuring 2 to 3 mm in width and about 30 mm in length. Anatomically, the eyelid margin can be subdivided into two distinct sections, the medial, lacrimal portion, this section is located near the inner corner of the eye, known as the medial candas. Notably, this part of the eyelid margin is devoid of eyelashes and glands. 
It is closely associated with the lacrimal system, which includes the lacrimal glands and ducts responsible for tear production and drainage. The lateral, ciliary portion, situated towards the outer corner of the eye, or the lateral candas, this section is anatomically distinct. It is characterized by the presence of eyelashes and several types of glands, including the marbomian glands, which secrete an oily substance that forms part of the tear film. The structure and proper alignment of the eyelid margin are crucial for ocular health. A condition such as entropion, where the eyelid margin, especially the eyelashes, turns inward, disrupts this delicate balance. This inward turning leads to constant friction between the eyelashes and the cornea, a phenomenon that can cause significant discomfort and may result in corneal ulcers. The candas is comprised of the lateral and medial canthi, each playing a unique role in ocular function. The lateral candas, situated at the outer corner of the eye, marks the junction of the upper and lower eyelid margins. This structure is not just a point of union but also aids in the structural integrity and functional movement of the eyelids. It typically lies about 5 to 7 mm medially from the orbital margin. In contrast, the medial can thus represents the convergence of the two lacrimal portions of the upper and lower eyelid margins. This area is particularly significant in the lacrimal, tear, system of the eye. Within the medial can thus lies the lacus lacrimalis, a small tear lake that plays a central role in tear collection and drainage. This reservoir is crucial for maintaining the moist environment necessary for the cornea and conjunctiva. Two notable structures are found within the lacus lacrimalis. 1. Lacrimal caruncle. This small, pink, globular nodule is located at the inner corner of the eye. The caruncle is composed of sebaceous and sweat glands and can also contain hair follicles and accessory lacrimal tissue. Its primary function is to contribute to the tear film that protects and lubricates the eye, although it also plays a role in the aesthetic appearance of the eye. 2. And the semilunar fold, Plica semilunaris. This crescent shaped fold of conjunctiva is an important feature for eye movement. Although often overlooked, the semilunar fold is essential for the smooth horizontal movement of the eye, allowing for the expansion and contraction of the conjunctival sac. Now, let's delve into the detailed structure and functions of the orbital septum. Nestled within the eyelid, it is characterized as a thin, yet robust, fibrous connective membrane. It exhibits a central attachment to the tarsal plates, which provide structural support to the eyelids, and extends peripherally to connect with the periosteum of the orbital margin. Anatomically, the septum varies in thickness, being notably thicker and more robust on the lateral side, a feature that is particularly pronounced in the upper eyelid. This variation in thickness is important as it contributes to the differential protective abilities of various parts of the eyelid. The membrane is interspersed with numerous perforations, which allow for the passage of critical structures such as nerves, blood vessels, and the levator palpebri superioris LPS, muscle. These openings are meticulously organized to facilitate the transit of these structures while maintaining the septum's role as a protective barrier. One of the key functions of the orbital septum is to act as a barrier, effectively separating the eyelids from the contents of the orbital cavity. This separation is vital in preventing the spread of infections from the external eyelid to the internal orbital structures. In the upper eyelid, the orbital septum displays a unique anatomical relationship as it fuses with the aponeurosis of the levator palpebri superioris muscle. This muscle is critical for eyelid elevation and, by extension, for the proper functioning of the upper eyelid in actions such as blinking and maintaining an open palpable fissure. In contrast, the orbital septum in the lower eyelid exhibits a different anatomical connection. Here, it blends with the capsulopalpable fascia. This fusion helps in maintaining the contour of the lower eyelid. The tarsus, serving as the structural backbone of the eyelids, is fundamental to their functionality and integrity. These tarsal plates, made of dense fibrous connective tissue, provide the necessary rigidity and shape to the eyelids. The firmness imparted by the tarsus is essential for the proper function of the eyelids in protecting the eye and facilitating the blinking mechanism. There are two distinct tarsal plates, each uniquely adapted to the requirements of the upper and lower eyelids. 1. The upper tarsal plate, this plate, crescentic in shape, is significantly larger, measuring approximately 30 mm in length and 10 mm in width. Its size and shape are crucial in supporting the upper eyelid's broader range of motion, necessary for complete eye closure and efficient blinking. 2. 
and the lower tarsal plate, smaller in size, measures around 20 mm in length and 5 mm in width. The positioning of the tarsus is also anatomically significant. The inner end of each tarsus aligns with the lacrimal punctum, a key element in the tear drainage system. On the other end, the outer portion of the tarsus is located about 7 mm from the malar region, which contributes to the aesthetic contour of the eyelids and the face. Furthermore, each of the tarsi is anchored to the orbit through the medial and lateral palpebral ligaments. These ligaments play a pivotal role in stabilizing the eyelids against the orbital bones, ensuring that the eyelids move smoothly and in coordination with each other. Now that we have completed the anatomical description of the eyelids, let's examine the eyelid muscles, starting with the levator palpebri superioris. This muscle, primarily responsible for elevating the upper eyelid, serves as a major eyelid retractor. It receives its neural input from the oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve 3, which is essential for its motor function. The LPS muscle originates deep within the orbit, specifically at its apex. This location is significant because it shares its origin with the superior rectus muscle, a relationship that is important for coordinated eye movements. From its origin, the LPS muscle courses anteriorly, positioned between the upper orbital wall and the superior rectus muscle. The muscle terminates by inserting into the anterior surface and the upper border of the tarsus. This insertion point is critical for transferring the muscle's lifting action to the eyelid. In addition to its primary function, the LPS muscle also plays a role in maintaining the eyelid's contour and position. When the muscle contracts, it not only lifts the eyelid but also helps maintain the eyelid's curvature, which is essential for proper visual field exposure and protection of the eye. Clinically, the levator palpebrae muscle is significant due to its involvement in various pathologies. It is notably affected in conditions like myasthenia gravis, an autoimmune neuromuscular disorder. In myasthenia gravis, the muscle weakens, leading to ptosis or drooping of the upper eyelid. This drooping can range from mild to severe, potentially obstructing vision. Furthermore, the associated muscle weakness can result in diplopia, double vision, as the weakened muscle struggles to coordinate with the other ocular muscles, disrupting normal binocular vision. The second muscle contributing to the movements of the eyelids is the orbicularis oculi muscle, a prominent muscle in the spectrum of facial expression. Its structure, composed of thin, striated muscle fibers, forms an oval sheet that overlays the eyelids. The muscle receives its innervation from branches of the facial nerve, particularly the temporal and zygomatic branches. Anatomically, the orbicularis oculi is divided into two main parts, each with distinct roles and locations. The orbital part, this portion of the muscle extends in a broad circular pattern around the orbit. It not only facilitates the voluntary and reflex closing of the eyelids, but also contributes to various expressions, such as squinting and frowning. By integrating with other facial expression muscles, the orbital part plays a role in conveying emotions and reactions. The palpebral part, more directly involved in the finer mechanics of eyelid movement, this part is subdivided into pretarsal portion, originating from the medial canthal tendon, this segment is intricately linked with the tarsal plates of the upper and lower eyelids. Its primary function is to enable the gentle closure of the eyelids, as seen during blinking. This action is essential for spreading the tear film across the eye surface, thereby ensuring proper lubrication and protection of the cornea. Preceptal portion, located in the peripheral region of the eyelid, this portion is made up of circular muscle fibers. It plays a role in the involuntary and voluntary closing of the eyes, contributing to the protective blinking mechanism. The vascular and lymphatic anatomy of the eyelids is a complex and efficient system, ensuring adequate blood supply, venous and lymphatic drainage, and immunological defense, all of which are vital for the health and proper functioning of the eyelids. The eyelids receive a rich blood supply primarily from the medial and lateral palpebral arteries, both of which are branches of the ophthalmic artery. The anastomosis of the lateral and medial palpebral arteries forms the superior and inferior marginal arterial arcades. This intricate vascular network is vital for ensuring a robust and consistent blood supply to the various tissues of the eyelids. Venous drainage in the eyelids is managed through two main plexuses. 1. Pretarsal plexus, positioned superficial to the tarsal plate of the eyelid, this plexus plays a crucial role in draining blood from the anterior structures of the eyelid. The drainage pathway varies based on the location, medially, the pretarsal plexus drains into the angular vein, 
providing an efficient route for blood to exit the medial aspect of the eyelid. Laterally, the drainage is into the superficial temporal vein and lacrimal vein, thus catering to the lateral aspect of the eyelid. 2. Post-tarsal plexus, this plexus, located posterior to the tarsal plate, is responsible for the venous drainage of the deeper structures of the eyelid. The blood collected by this plexus is ultimately channeled into the ophthalmic vein, a significant venous structure within the orbital region. Lymphatic drainage of the eyelids is accomplished via two primary networks, the subcutaneous and subconjunctival lymphatic plexuses. These plexuses not only drain lymphatic fluid from the eyelids, but also facilitate immune responses and maintain tissue homeostasis. The subcutaneous lymphatic plexus lies just beneath the skin, while the subconjunctival plexus is situated closer to the conjunctiva. The intercommunication between these plexuses ensures comprehensive lymphatic drainage from both superficial and deep eyelid structures. They are connected to regional lymph nodes, particularly the submandibular and preauricular lymph nodes. The nerve supply of the eyelids plays a crucial role in both sensory perception and motor function. The sensory innervation of the eyelids is primarily supplied by the ophthalmic and maxillary branches of the trigeminal nerve, which is the fifth cranial nerve. This nerve is essential for transmitting sensory information from the eyelids to the brain. Specifically, the upper eyelid receives sensory innervation mainly from branches such as the supraorbital, supratrochlear, and lacrimal nerves. These nerves provide sensation to different parts of the upper eyelid, ensuring a quick response to any irritation or injury. Similarly, the lower eyelid receives sensory innervation primarily from the infraorbital nerve, a branch of the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve, playing a key role in the sensation of the lower eyelid. The motor innervation of the eyelids, which controls movement, is predominantly governed by the facial nerve. This nerve innervates the orbicularis oculi muscle, crucial for blinking and closing the eyelids. This action is vital for protecting the eye from foreign bodies and distributing the tear film uniformly across the eye surface. However, the levator palpebri superioris muscle, which elevates the upper eyelid, is an exception in terms of its nerve supply. It is innervated by the superior division of the oculomotor nerve. This muscle is crucial for eyelid elevation, enabling the opening of the eye. In conclusion, each side of the human face is adorned with a pair of eyelids, remarkable structures made of skin, muscle, and fibrous tissue, primarily designed for the protection of the eyes. These dynamic structures serve multiple essential functions. Primarily, they play a critical role in the distribution of the tear film across the cornea. This tear film is vital for maintaining corneal health, providing necessary nutrients, and ensuring clear vision. In addition to film distribution, the eyelids are integral in the process of tear drainage. They facilitate the movement of tears towards the puncta, the entry points to the tear drainage system, thus maintaining eye hydration and removing debris. The functionality of the eyelids extends to the protection of ocular surfaces. By closing reflexively, they shield the eyes from potential irritants and mechanical injuries. This reflex action is a critical defensive mechanism against environmental hazards, including dust, wind, and bright light. Furthermore, the eyelids house specialized glands that are indispensable for ocular health. The meibomian glands, located along the rim of the eyelids, secrete a lipid-rich substance that prevents the evaporation of the eye's tear film. Meanwhile, the lacrimal accessory glands contribute to the aqueous layer of the tear film, providing necessary lubrication and comfort. Anatomically, the complexity of the eyelids is evident in their division into two distinct lamellae, the anterior and the posterior lamellae. The anterior lamella consists of the skin and orbicularis oculi muscle, which are crucial for eyelid movement and expression. The posterior lamella, on the other hand, comprises the tarsal plate and conjunctiva, providing structural support and housing the meibomian glands. 